even see maybe a TF pickup come through and just try and dominate the earlier part of the rift. Well, as you said, junglers have actually been banned away here just a little bit. Rek'Sai being taken away from Blank. We do have the Sejuani ban from Kakao. Bit of a respect ban there. He had some brilliant Glacial Prisons in his last Sejuani match. Just wasn't enough to get him over the line, no, though. They did have quite. some good team fights. That was, of course, teamed up with the Azir coming through from Rookie. We also see Maokai and LeBlanc being taken off the Rift. A lot of respect to Rookie here. And interesting that the Maokai band coming through, of course, Cola, more of that sort of nah player if he wants to get on one of those big tanks. But Nautilus going to be taken off the board. It does leave Rookie's Ari available. Zatai hovering over a Riven here. We'll see what he does decide to lock in for this first pick for Invictus Gaming. But that does leave the Thresh open. They Jana could potentially also grab open. it. There's just so many power picks available for Royal Club in that bottom lane. And that's exactly where I thought IG would hit. Try and hit the bottom lane so that they don't have to put any jungle pressure there and then dominate the top side of the map, which is just what Kakao and Rookie are famous for. But looks like they're going something completely different this time around. Maybe Zatai just wants to play Riven. Maybe he just wants to play Riven, or maybe they're just hovering something here as it's the last second switch over to the Gragas, and you have to think that that's probably going to be in the jungle here for Kakao. Yeah, probably the Grungle coming through there for Kakao. We've seen him play it to very yeah. good effect. And I want to see what Blank runs in response here, because if anything, Kakao's shown that he wants to get in your face as a jungle Gragas. The surprising amount of burst damage that comes through from W early game just makes him a terrifying. He's sustained by going around the map with that body slam, of course, utilizing the passive to keep himself topped off, and just so much CC in the kit. Yeah, and we've seen these uh, Gragas jungles be very successful in the past. This cannon pickup is interesting without possibly taking away that Janna, because, of course, that Monsoon is generally a pretty good tool to get rid of the guy, but he is going to be picked up. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking at Zero right now, and I'm thinking, has he got it in his back pocket, the support cannon oh my that could goodness. come through? Is this something that Royal Club are looking to pull out against IG, of course? With a Gragas as well as a Jana uh, pickup potentially available on the other lineup. Very brave pickup yep. coming through from Royal Club here with so much on the line, but it looks like that's what they're committing to. Looks like it is. It's going to be the Nar locked in here for Zatai. More of a pick away from Kohli, you have to think, as Kakao is going to take away the Callista here for Kid. Kid having a lot of Callista games in his match history thus far. More than happy to hop back onto that Comfort pickup. And Royal Club, it's their turn to sort of round out their lineup now, and we'll see whether it could potentially be that support cannon. Yeah, I want to see if that is what's coming through. Of course, they know the top lane matchup now. Is the oh Nar, so they can goodness. send it there. And Name just insta-locks in a vein. Is this actually Uzi, ladies and gentlemen, sitting in the Starhorn Royal Club lineup? Because, of course, that is generally where he used to be sitting. But, no, it is going to be Name picking up the vein here. You can see he's got a bit of a determined look in his eye as he's heading into the rift onto that champion. Yeah, he certainly does. And we also see the sign picked up. So that is most likely the top lane matchup. Although we've seen crazy mid lane Zions. We've even seen a the couple of jungles. Of so we'll see exactly where that is. You would think that it's a jungle Jarvan top lane Sion, maybe mid cannon, although most likely in support. And we see that is the Jana as well as the Lissandra being hovered here. Would be surprised to see that. Makes a lot more sense to have the Azir there. So much zone control coming out of the IG lineup right now. They control all terrain. Yeah, all terrain and they can move people around if they want to and Having so much consistent damage here as well, what with Callista and an Azir on the team, that is terrifying. Yeah, it certainly is. As far as two threats lineups goes, probably one of the most consistent DPS threats on the map there, of course. Also doing some surprising burst damage late game is Azir with that Emperor's Divide yeah. coming through. So see how Rookie plays that. He's played it terrifically. And it looks like it's going to be a potential Ari pickup here for Korn. Of course, very good at the Assassins in the mid lane. Rise is still available, and we've seen scaling threats be run into. Vladimir, also a scaling threat. Oh, yeah. Be run into it, and it is the Vladimir going into the mid lane. Yeah, Korn picking that one up here against the Azir. We'll see how he's going to do. Is Royal Club going to mix things up? And Kola is hovering the cannon, but I think that's going to be switched over, and it's going to be an exciting matchup. We'll see exactly how this one goes because I personally have not yet seen the support cannon. Yeah, of course, Mata pulled it out, I believe, in the LPL. And it is a definitely interesting pick. Does a lot of harass in lane or, of course, has that 
pretty much on-demand stun with the lightning rush yeah. into the auto attack as well as the W. So we'll see exactly how it works out. But Royal Club, they've got a very tanky scaling lineup. Certainly do, especially considering this top lane Cola against a very familiar Nah here with the Scion. And Kakao against Blank on the Javan, of course, has played a lot of that Javan since joining the lineup here in Kakao. His couple of Gragas games were terrifying. Yeah, they certainly were. And we go into the mid lane. The two late game hyper carries, Vladimir versus Azir. We also see two very mobile AD carries coming yeah. onto the rift for Kitaname in the Callista versus the Vayne. And we'll round out the compositions with some heavy engage versus <laughs> some heavy disengage. Zero versus Kitties. This should be fun to watch. Yeah, and this is sort of the classic, like, okay, we have to pick Janna here. Because that cannon was just going to be a complete menace. And having that in the 2v2, if they are deciding to go with that, is definitely something that they're going to need. And we'll see whether a lane swap is going to be instigated. Do you think that this is lane swap territory here? Uh, yeah, definitely think it's lane swap territory for both teams. There's just so much risk running hyper carries into standard lanes at the moment. If anything goes wrong, they get way too far behind. So expect that to go through. Well, we'll see whether it does happen as we hop onto the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for our third matchup of the evening. Invictus Gaming taking on Starhorn Royal Club. Starhorn Royal Club trying to keep their playoff dreams alive. There's Kakao waiting beside this brush, looking to see what's going to go on. As I'm going to have a slight pause in this one, just see exactly what's going on as we move on to the rift. Yeah, just take a look at Kakao. Very focused there. There's normally grinning. There's normally that cackle happening. Not this game. He's grungling. Certainly is. In my God, he looks mad at someone. <laughs> Maybe someone stopped his game. I mean, uh, I guess that has actually happened here. But of course, these teams looking for and a more. And then he yawned. Maybe he was just tired <laughs> all along, Atlas. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you can see already, actually, fairly sort of defensive starts here. No teams grouping up to go for that early vision to scout out these lane swaps. Yeah, there isn't so far. Only one interesting. Item pick up for me here. It is, of course, the Doran shield on the Vladimir in the mid lane yeah. before we went into the break. That's very interesting. There's a cannon with a ruby crystal. Interesting. I don't mind that because getting an early sight stone pretty much is a GP10. And the more health he has, the easier it will be for him to initiate. So I do like the pick up there. If you were going to be a cannon picking up a, uh, a, sort, a sort of gold generation item, what would that be? Spell Thieves would be the obvious choice? No, I actually think the reason... Be, spell th Thieves in lane, yes, obvious choice, but with Cannon, you want that speed up. You want the talisman for yeah, the late true. game. So I think that's why it has... Wow, as Nami gets chunked out. Nami, sorry. Yeah, Nami, not, not actually in this game. Thank the goodness. The player, not the champion. Yeah, and Zero just plays too much Nami. I swear to goodness. It's just frustrating as... Actually, IG looking to try and stop this back here as well. Nami... Not going to be able to head back very quickly as IG now going to be able to get some deep vision down as well. Possibly scout out a potential lane swap as Nami is going to finally be able to go home. Yeah, so a lot of deep wards went through and there was nothing retaliating on the side of Starhorn Royal Club. So they are completely blind as to where the lanes are going. On the other side, IG, they know exactly where the members are going to be as we see the pings coming out in the top lane already. We will get the lane swap through, though. Yeah, it is going to be the lane swap here for Royal Club. Minions are going to be followed as Nami's oh, going to pick up a cheeky 10 gold. Straight away, as soon as IG saw Nami go for that little bit of the wrath, Wraith, they uh, yep. straight away just ran up to the top lane. Yep. Sentinel, Sentinel down. Sentinel worked. Sentinel certainly worked here for IG. Spotting out the members of Royal Club, but Cola, he's going to die. Of course, thank goodness... We're not playing Fantasy LPL because Cola playing this champion, not going to be helping you out very much there. I feel like that joke has definitely been overdone. As the potential freeze to come through here, as we did have Nami entering this lane first, but not deciding to go for it as there is a bunch of creeps up here in the top side. Yeah, it certainly is. He's already pushing it. They straight away saw the teleport come through and it's so important to push for level two. You do not want to get level two by Kid and Kitties. Of course, with the CC that can come out of Janna plus the Eye of the Storm Shield, just so much damage. So that's what they went for straight away. And you see already the zoning coming through here from Zero. He's only level one, but he's more than happy with that range support to try and put down some pain. 
Yeah, and he's hitting all of these shurikens as well. Zero, very comfortable on this support cannon. And that lightning surge really doing some work here as well as the tie and cola. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Of course, the tie is going to be frustrating on this mini now, but Cola going to be almost unkillable on this Sion. Yeah, he certainly isn't. The thing about Sion is he can just shrug off so much with the shield, with the fact that he gets the luxury first item in that flask. And straight away, we've seen this matchup before from Rookie. I think it was against Dade, and he took the minute at twelve uh, mid turret at 12 minutes. And then we yep. saw it again, and he did the exact same thing. So expect him to be super aggressive with the lane swap coming through. Probably going to be no jungle pressure towards that mid lane. And we've seen in the 1v1 situation, he is just way too good at the moment. And actually the push in here for Royal Club, they have sent Name right back again. Picked up a longsword for himself. As Kid's going to take as long as he possibly can pushing this wave back. You can see it is returning and Zero happy to stick around, pick up some CS and also a, just a bit more of that experience as well. Yeah, maybe just recognizing the fact that with the Jhana Shield they can't trade as well, so they needed the pots I think more than the Longsword, so that's what all that pack was about. As we see Kakao's first gank in here onto Kola. Yeah, looking for Kola here, flashes out of the way of the body slam. But that is definitely summon a spell down, Kakao. Very early successful gank. Yeah, Kakao just happy to trade it. Generally, you can flash at the end of your body slam. Still probably could have made that one connect if he wanted, but in the end, just takes the flash for the first successful gank. Yep, no problem at all. Rookie continuing to push out this wave as Name making it back to lane, able to just pick up the farm as it crashes against the turret here, continuing to have a slight advantage there in that farm. And Korn just doing his best to clear out this wave as Rookie is just going to try and harass him down again and again and this is what you got to do keep the Vladimir down before he hits that level nine before he has all of the points in his queue so that he has just so much sustain yeah and the fact that rookie has taken an aggressive summoner spell he has that ignite here of course late game fantastic against the Vladimir but with how stacked that minion wave is if blank had to come in for the gank there was a very real potential that he would turn it around with the creeps that he had and you can see already this is the versus Vladimir matchup. They keep picking it against him, and he keeps doing work. Yeah, it's very similar to the old uh, Annie into Nah matchup that we've seen. <laughs> yes, we don't got talk the about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. Sorry, Looper. The poor guy's not even in the game. We're talking about Dade. <laughs> Looper didn't lose the Vladimir matchup. No, he wasn't playing Annie that game. It was fine. Absolutely fine. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Nami able to free farm this one. Zero still with complete control. His lane presence is fantastic. Is holding onto that auto attack just to make sure that he can get that extra mark of the storm on his target. Look how relaxed Kid looks on the player cam. Almost looks like he's playing with one hand. Yeah, it's just chilling. Missing three CS. <laughs> Put the second hand on the keyboard. Yep. There it is. Condemned against the wall there as well, just to make sure the Kid doesn't have too easy time farming under this wave. And Blank, he's at half health, hanging out here just to try and get some potential counter gank as Kakao is making his way up here as well. He's going to take away that Rift Scuttler there and head towards this top side. They do have vision here in this brush. And we'll see whether Blank can turn this one around. Oh, gets the double knock up there as well as the Ignite comes down. Kakao getting instantly bursted and Name picks up first blood, kid. Now in a bit of trouble, but he's going to get out of there as well. And Blank, what fantastic counter gank timing. And that was just such a bad gank coming through from Kakao. Willing to burn a summoner spell to get in. It looked like it was all going right with the amount of burst damage that come through. But there are so many summoner spells available on the opposition lineup. And just an overextension means that first blood goes through for Royal Club. Yeah, and for Name here as well on the vein of all champions. Not exactly what you want to get first blood if you are an IG fan as Korn continues to try and farm under this turret, but he's doing a whole lot better now that he has that revolver picked up and Kola has his shield broken, but he's going to be A-OK -okay as Meganar comes through for Zatai. Yeah, certainly is. They're just farming down there. Looks like Kola has that early advantage just because of the gank that came through. Ah, uh, sorry. Zatai has the early advantage because of the gank that came through onto Kola, but... In the top lane, 8 CS, the advantage is not a lot, but when you think about the fact that this is a cannon vein lane, yeah, probably the, not the designed to win. <laughs> probably not designed to win the lane. 
It's just going to mean all kinds of bad things if they're able to keep this advantage. Remember that Name was actually forced back to pick up additional potions extremely early in the game, and he's got a unique build, I'll call it Atlas. Yeah, this looks very like strange. he's going into the Cutlass, but doesn't value the act uh, added AD that you get from the combine. I actually think you only get the active damage from the combine, so it's really not worth the gold at this point in the game. Prioritizing some attack speed instead. Yeah, I just I never judge Name on his his item builds because the way he purchases items is just so impressive. Yeah, it certainly is. He's probably the most efficient spender of gold. If you want to go thrift shopping, you would probably <laughs> take Name with you because he's pretty good at getting bang for buck out of items. Yeah, well, we'll see how it does go entering this lane. Of course, BF Sword was completed here by Kid, probably opting to pick up that Bloodthirster first off. We'll see whether he does want to go for that uh, Hurricane as well, whether it's going to be that more Phantom Dancer orientated build. Phantom Dancer is just so good at the moment that I don't know how you look past it as an AD. In the late game, it's just unparalleled. Static Ship, it's still a fine pickup if you have the gold for it. But late game, you really do want to be swapping out for that Phantom Dancer. And the Hurricane build just doesn't prioritize any crit, so it doesn't make sense in the current meta. Although we have seen players continually go back to it. We have. The last few Callistas that we have seen, of course, the AoE is definitely still fantastic, so there's no loss in synergy there. But the tank bust ability, as you mentioned, not exactly able without that crit available. Yeah, and nearly 10 minutes into the game, My so look goodness. how deep Rookie is going in on this turret. It's half health. He's just sent the Vladimir back. We might have another sub-12 minute turret takedown in the mid lane from Rookie on his ear. We might be close to sub-10 minutes here as well, of course, only with a quarter health left. No mid laner available, and Rookie's just slamming at this thing. No one around at all. Jarvan's back in base as well. Three caster creeps. This could be a dead turret. Yeah. 10 minutes. Certainly looks to be the case. And once again, Rookie, his laning phase Atlas is out of control at the moment. This is, people are going to have to start figuring out what to do against this Azir because he just continues to push and acts like there's no jungler on the map. Well, there hasn't been in the mid lane. Of course, you did mention that Blank had an opportunity to potentially gank this one, but not happening. Zero actually taking a lot of harassment here on the top side as Kid's going to get condemned back. Zero has to be careful. But that's a 20 CS advantage for Name in that lane on a vein with that's a kill. That's ridiculous. Completely nuts that they're able to win that lane. And Rookie, he's actually put a sun turret up and behind now, Vlad. Yeah, now Korn is actually dirty farming between his own turret and the enemy's turret. That is, that is a very confusing That is a thing. cheeky move. Yeah. And you can see Korn just has no idea what to really do at the moment. As Actually, there's the Flash Dragon Dragon immediately getting the flashes. Oh, the Empress Divide. So beautiful as Kakao comes through the backside. There's the turret as well as Rookie's going to pick up the kill. Korn finds himself in no man's land, but does pick up Rookie. See whether the 1v1 is going to be on here as the Vladimir does have a lot of consistent damage. Kakao's just relentlessly beating on this Vladimir, though as the support does come down from the top side. Korn's going to be okay, and in the end, it's a one-for-one. One. Yeah, and a very good rotation as well. Whoa. Kitties gets chunked out. Oh, actually, Zero coming through here. Just try and get the stun. Oh, my goodness. There's the tick as he walks in range of it. And Name, wow, that pierce did so much work from Kid. And that quality of life changes. Kakao pings that he's coming into the top lane. I don't think that's a good idea, so he'll just recall... And the top lane for the Royal Club, their duo AD and support just putting on such a clinic. You see, it was the early side stone, and it just made Cannon so tanky. They couldn't deal with him. Yeah, he looks so healthy in this lane as well, as you mentioned. So, unable to really do anything. Randu and Zoman already completed here by Zatai into uh, Korn, who, Kolo, sorry, who only has the giant spell He's finished up. Is heading now. back. We'll see what he does pick up. As it is going to be the Glacial Shroud, trying to pick up as many resistances as he possibly can. Korn... Does have a Negatron Cloak now, so he's going to be able to withstand the poke coming through from a rookie a little bit better. But the main purchase here is Name having a 12-minute Blade of the Rune King. Yeah, it certainly does. So he is ready to go into split push mode. They're sending him back into the bottom lane. Cannon already clearing out the uh, vision around Dragon. You think with that pickup, they might be ready to start trying to take some neutral objectives. Yeah, rookie still with firm control of this mid lane does spot out the fact that there's a pink ward hanging out there but he can't overextend too far he's just going to continue clearing the mid yeah this so has been his mo if we take a look at the gold 700 still the advantage for ig 
They're winning mid, they're winning top. They were able to pick up that early mid turret. Royal Club, a lot of their gold on their bottom lane members, although Korn was lucky to pick up that kill in the exchange. So whilst she's down 27 CS, compared to, comparable to other lanes, still very strong. No one at the po this point, however, can go anywhere near Rookie. He's got two levels on Name, which is probably the turning point there. And he's extremely fit to fight at this point in the game. And it looks like Royal Club, a lot of pressure on this bottom side. Callista still not down there just yet. Silverbolts is going to be helpful as far as these neutral objectives are concerned as Blank actually getting invaded here on his blue buff. Rookie and Kakao hanging around. The Wolves are being taken here by Korn in the meantime as the Sand Soldiers are being a menace. And there's the Flag and Drag. Rookie actually getting cataclysmed here as well. There's the Empress Divide. Gets rid of everyone. They have to walk all the way around, but Zero's come in. Cola looking for the knock-up as Kakao has a drink to try and heal himself back up. Satai hanging in the backside, but he's not the tanky monster that he wants to be. In the meantime, though, Name from the back and Rookie so incredibly low. Pulls there as well as Korn trying to get some work done. Kitty's getting ignored, but finally gets turned around upon. Look at these Sand Soldiers tearing apart the members of Royal Club, but it's not enough as Kitty's falls down. It's a three for one for Royal Club. And an extremely deep invade goes horribly wrong. Kakao just playing over aggressive, but it was all about the fact that Zatai just didn't go into Mega Nar for that team fight. Was completely useless, was he didn't ineffective. Really do much. And I think he was expecting to be Mega Nar at some point in that fight and then just wasn't really there. A little bit unfortunate. We'll see whether IG can claw their way back. Of course, Rookie's still incredibly strong. Massive lead in this farm. And Royal Club now with an opportunity to pick up this dragon. Yeah, so they're moving in, of course. The Blade of the Ruin King Vane. She'll chunk that one out. Doesn't even need the jungler there. So they pick up the first dragon of the game. And they've snuck a gold advantage without taking a turret. So that's fantastic news. Bottom lane is 2-0 and 2 apiece. This cannon vein. Apparently strong duo. Yeah, it's not working out too badly. As Zero has actually picked up an arm guard and mobility boots. Yeah, so apparently... Is he going into farm mode now? Apparently late game, Cannon doesn't want to go that talisman. Not going for the move speed initiation build that we've seen become so popular and the likes of maybe Nautilus support. But instead, just going into a very AP heavy centric build. It's almost like he feels like he's a top lane Cannon in a lane swap at the moment. Well, we have seen Zero pick up the Aurelia support, yep. I believe. Now we're seeing him on the Cannon support. Maybe you're right. Maybe he just has missed a calling in life. Or maybe he's just going for a smooth transition into a role swap. He's like, okay, guys, I, I'd prefer to be a top laner, but I just want to make a make the transition slowly, carefully. I'll stay, in the bottom lane. <laughs> yeah, I'll stay in the bottom lane, but I'm just going to play top lane champions. It's going to be fine. Not entirely sure whether that's exactly going to be working out, but for Zero, certainly has this game 2-0 and 2 now. Same as Name. This duo definitely working. And Kid and Kitties, they can't come anywhere near this minion wave. Yeah, they certainly can't. And what that means is that the minion uh, discrepancy only going to grow here. No way that they can fight in the 2 on 2 at this point. They are going for the Hurricane build as well against what will be a very tanky Jarvan Scion late game. Don't know if that is the right pickup coming through there. And you see a lot of the... Oh my goodness, Hemoplake's going to be used here as Korn does manage to bait out the ultimate, but he pops a summoner spell just to run at the face of Rookie. Yeah, ultimate's been popped from Scion as well. Yeah, actually, Cola going to get knocked into the wall there as well. Is Zatai going to launch himself over that one? Actually, that's the flash into the ultimate there as well from Zatai. Cola going down incredibly low here. Both of these tanky beasts trying to fight him, and they can tank this turret for so long, that Randy and Zoman doing a whole lot of work. And I didn't quite think that that was going to work, but did great things there for IG as Kid now in a lot of trouble. The Fate's call to come through, but Zero is just going to destroy Kid. It's 3-0-2 now for the Cannon. Yeah, so Cannon putting on an absolute clinic. 0-2-6 for Blank as well. Definitely need to give him a shout-out as the first turret falls for Royal Club. That means 1,000 gold is the lead, probably the first significant lead of the game coming through. And 3-7, a lot of pressure is being applied throughout this map. Looks like they're trying to respond with a top lane turret coming through from Zatai, but they have rotated Korn into that top lane to be able to clear that out. Yeah, Name just playing this vein so beautifully well here at the same time. And he is one of these AD carries that isn't necessarily a laning AD carry as well. He's known for teamfight positioning, but so far in the lane, 
It's been incredible. Yeah, it certainly has looked to be on point and is through the hard part of the game. Now picked up some crit and some further attack speed, so he's going to be completely fine. If we go through the other items, we see that it looks like Kakao has just completely bypassed the second sight zone on his team, so not looking to get any vision down, wants to be combat stat efficient, as opposed to Blank, who's using a lot of his assist gold to try and get some further vision down for his team. In the mid lane, that Stinger has been picked up by Rookie, so he's at a very smooth mid-game spike with just those two items. Has elected for the Sork Boots, so not really respecting the CC that will come out of Cannon. Doesn't want to pick up Mercury Treads. Interesting. Probably thinks that he'll be able to use that Emperor's Divide in order to get them out of there. Of course, with the Emperor's Divide and the Gnar and the Explosive Cask and the Monsoon, it's probably okay without him. Yeah, they've got some tools to be able to do it, but the danger with Kennen and his ultimate is the fact that now that you can activate W as soon as you are within that Slaxing Maelstrom, that you can just get stunned up so incredibly quickly that it might not be the Kennen that kills him. Well, that's true, and of course, Kennen with the Slicing Maelstrom is a pretty fantastic peel at the same time. If everyone's trying to jump onto Name, is Kakao looking to try and take down Kola as they're zoning him off this turret? IG are going to be able to take that one down as well, but it is a trade, of course. And Korn still having to deal with this Azir in the mid lane, who's just being a menace now. 50 CS in the lead, but Royal Club, they're not stopping. They're going to be able to take this in a turret. Zatai doing the very best that he can, but of course, he's only got tank items. That Spectre's Cow there as well. Not going to be helping with the damage, but as the creeps died, he's going to be okay as Mega Nar form coming through. There's the launch as Blank going to have to use the Flag and Dragon in order to get out. Zatai picks up his house. Yeah, also... Not going to find anything else. Oh Ooh. my goodness, Corn forced to use that flash. There are the Sand Soldiers and the Emperor's Divide to push him back. Hasn't used the pull just yet, but... That wasn't going to save him, and IG, they pick up an easy mid laner in transition. Yeah, and Rookie really is the shining light for IG. We talked about how the Gragas jungle had looked great coming out of Kakao, but not really having the best of games. Rookie, he's in a class of his own at the moment in the mid lane. Throw in Pawn actually there. It may be cool as well for some good <laughs> flavor. There's a couple of good mid laners. You're not quite ready to in make the that Not ready to make that Come one. On, it makes man. it out. Right. Wow, it's Kakao. Gets caught out by zero, but we'll be able to pick up the blue buff still. I'm surprised that this support cannon didn't manage to out damage and pick up that blue buff. Well, Smite is a very useful skill. I know. I know. Just zero just objectives. seems to be able to do things that I don't understand this game, okay? Seems to be how it's working, but of course it doesn't happen that time as Name is going to continue clearing out this mid wave. Kid has managed to claw back a little bit. Name was really streaming ahead in that farm, but now only ahead by about 30 CS, which is still about the same as it was a few minutes ago. And the Dragon, second one of the game, going to be started up for Royal Club, who are looking like a completely different team this game. Well, remember, they did win their last series 2-0 as well. So picking up exactly where they left off in that regard. That's a good point. Are looking very good. And we've got two needlessly large rods and two amp tones, Atlas. A wise man would probably think that that would be two Zonya's Hourglass. An optimistic color caster would think two Luden's Echoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, optimistic, really? Is that... No, I think it is two Luden's Echoes, that item. Just too much fun. Dang it, Earth mode. Ruining everything. <laughs> Seems to be the only item in the shop. So we do have a little bit of a lull in the map. If we revisit exactly where we are in this game, the Vayne snuck out to a very early lead, being able to keep that 20 CS exactly where it is. Top laners, they're pretty much equal at this point. Of course, Cola, he's died once to champions and once to the wolf camp. That is true. Wolf camp, very formidable coming through there and across the board it really does look like they're just trying to ramp up gold is completely even dragon count in favor of starhorn royal club next one's about four minutes away at this point baron not even objective at the moment no one's going to be looking at it and as far as that baron is concerned you've got vein silver bolts massive baron damage with that blade of the ruin king as well but Callista. The sort of Baron Secure Queen. Both of these teams with a lot of neutral damage. Who wins, though, as far as the speed of taking that Baron is concerned? Azir is the quickest Baron taker in the game. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, was, I thought it was a good question, but... No. Nah, so, it, it's a fantastic <laughs> question. Azir comes through and just absolutely decimates neutrals with three Sand Soldiers coming through. Late game build, all that AP yeah, during true. the on-hit. Of course, 
Baron just so much better against auto attacks than he is against magic damage, because magic damage is just not supposed to come out as quick as Azir throws it. Yeah. So he is in a much better position. Probably the fact that... So oh, we've got Zatai in some trouble. Zatai's in a whole lot of trouble here as well. Does flash out of the way of the ultimate there and bounces out of the Cataclysm. And Zatai, he wasn't in trouble. He was absolutely fine. Yeah, Sorry, so right. he was able to grab two ultimates for his work there. But it does look like they'll be able to push in on this turret now. Name looking to get extremely busy around the map. Now does back away because the rotation's coming through from everyone. And it is a good question because you feel if IG start off the Baron with the Callista, they take yeah. it extremely quickly and secure. Starhorn Royal Club still do it very well, and it's always dangerous to jump in a Baron Pit against a Cannon because of the lockdown CC, as now Rookie in some trouble. Actually, Rookie tries to use the Emperor's Divide to get away. The Ignite's ticking down. Is it going to be enough? The last tick not going to get there as the slow from the Q comes through as well. Zero, he really wants to pick up this kill. Is he going to land the Q? Doesn't find it. Kitties gets the shield. Zero now getting turned around. And this is a support cannon who gets exhausted but picks up the kill. And he's going to fall down. But mid laner for support, definitely going to work out in Royal Club's favor. And they've got their push on in the mid lane. Definitely not in Royals Club favor unless they pick up this turret because it was actually the Azir that got the kill. And giving a kill over to an Azir versus a support cannon, I know which one I would prefer every day That's of the week. Point. The Azir just going to scale so well into the late game. And I guess it's not exactly that point of the game where you've got that one person dead and you can capitalize on it. It's You've got that one person dead and then you try to look for a dragon that's dead and this tower, we don't have enough minions and... That sort of situation. So, of course, yeah, I guess getting a kill under the Azir, pretty good. Yeah, so definitely good. They also were able to get a couple of summoner spells out of zero, which means he's engaged potential at this point of the game where Cannon should be shining. Won't be there without that flash to come through. So just a couple of things on Royal Club's way. Of course, the Azir also going to be extremely immobile now that the flash is down as we see Zatai throw a boomerang south for some reason. Oh, he just likes it. Gonna catch it though. Turn really big here at the same time. Kid sitting on that recurve bow for quite some time now has a pickaxe as well. It's almost like he's in two minds for going for this hurricane. Is Name gonna head away from this bottom side? Rookie clearing out some vision here as well. They're gonna steal away the blue buff. Again, this is the third contest in a row. First one went horribly wrong. Last two, they've been able to pick up. First one onto Kakao, now one onto Rookie. Yeah, not too bad at all. Of course, Dragon up in another minute and a half. Scuttle Crab almost going to give him, uh, IG vision of when that one does respawn. Oh, and it was a Zonya's Hourglass for both mid laners. Oh, dear. And for the support, which we, I guess, knew because Arm Guard's he not He started with an Arm Guard, yeah. Yeah, unfortunate. But, of course, there is still room in the item build spawn. There might be a Luden's Echo coming. You never know. Another house going to get thrown here by Zatai. He's pushing towards this turret. We'll see whether he gets any free time with it as Royal Club are positioning around this dragon now, trying to get the vision available. They will have three dragons to none if they pick up the next one in 50 seconds. And we'll see how they do in these team fights because, of course, Rookie has shown that he can really tear these ones apart. And IG's team fight comp is terrifying. But Royal Club still have the scaling advantage. We'll see whether this Vayne being so far ahead is going to help them out as the Ty is going to be able to take down the top lane out of turret and he's going to keep pushing. Yeah, and this is exactly what Rookie does to maps. He just draws so much attention towards him. He's just building this CS advantage now up to 40. You've seen that they had the big ganking roam squad trying to catch him out and he just farms so effectively that in the end you kind of focus him and lose sight of the other members of IG. It leads to a lot of map pressure being applied and in the end now a 2,000 gold advantage being picked up with that top turret in the uh, the top turret in the top lane. Who would have thought? No, as a tie heading back towards that top side as well. Of course, Collar and Zatai both with their teleports available. Both can stop the other teleport after a very long time as well. Although Zatai, if he uh, sorry, Collar, if he just ults at him, we'll be able to knock him up very <laughs> quickly. That's true. Decimating smash would work, I believe, but you'd probably have to charge it pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I have to charge that one in. And third dragon is start off. Teleport coming through first for Zatai. So now the Scion's coming in here. He's got a good flank positioning. They're split up here. Need to be careful. 
Yeah, they're looking for something. This Zonya's Hourglass Cannon looking to try and initiate something up here as well as Name's gonna condemn Kakao out of the way and they don't manage to get the Dragon Steel as well. There's the jump into the backside as Name is the focus here by Zatide. Nars or everyone else into the wall, but this Vayne is doing some work on that backside, but look at all of this AoE. IG tearing Royal Club apart. Finally, Name gets some focus, and Rookie just destroys him. IG in a team fight, looking so good. Decimating Smash should be renamed as Cola does nothing to the IG lineup. And man, five for nothing. Yeah, what a team fight coming out of IG. They might even be able to rotate into that early Baron coming through, of course. Kakao extremely tanky. They've got the Hyper, they've got the Callista, not to mention the Azir that will be joining them shortly. And everything just went wrong with Royal Club because they didn't expect a three-man Nar ultimate. It looked like Zatai, as we see the replay, was tunneling in on Name. He goes right over the back. They think Name is safe so they can now fight. And he wanders lazily into a three-man Nar off a great ultimate from Rookie. And from there, in the backside, Rookie just safe behind his turret, putting out so much damage, goes deep here to pick Name up on the backside with the help of Kakao. And it was just a very well played team fight, but split execution coming through from Royal Club. Yeah, and it was just beautiful shot calling as well. Just the target selection coming through from IG was, we're going to kill this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And the communication was flawless coming through. And this is a team that we've spoken about before, having sort of multiple different native languages as well. And just looks like they're playing like a well-oiled unit in these team fights. And Rookie... Continuing to put the pressure on 50 CS in the lead, 4 2 and 5. And I don't think we can say more about this guy's Azir. It is so frightening, and I don't know why it's not getting banned away. Yeah, it certainly is an interesting pick to come through. Of course, we've seen the resurgence of Azir on this patch 5.6. Deals with the tanks extremely well, Atlas. Yeah. It's something we need to point out. If you can't burst him down, has so much self peel with that wall, with the fact that he can knock people up with his ultimate as well. He's pushing power. Very good in the mid lane, and he's at four items at this point. Really, one more effective item. Five if you put boots in there. Looking extremely scary at only the 30-minute mark. And Kid, he's now finished off that Hurricane. Went for a very gold-efficient build with the Last Whisper beforehand. And they look like they're ready to start pushing into the base. Yeah, and that allowed him to deal with uh, Cola here as well because that last Whisper able to eat through that Frozen Heart there at the same time. And when there's doubles on his Hourglass, why not build it a little bit earlier as IG? They're going to be able to take down this mid lane inhibitor turret. Korn in a lot of trouble. The pool is available there as well. He's getting a lot of health back, but there's Rookie with the Golden Bird in the middle of the team. Kitties gets Fates called towards the end there. Tries to hold on to this one as Rookie's going to fall down. Name picks up the kill. Kakao getting knocked up. Name still alive somehow. Picks up a double as Korn using the bait skates to perfection and is going to die in the end as Kid able to secure that one and Cola the tight jump in through all into the base yeah the hyperprox going to help slow him down a little bit but looks like in the end Royal Club are going to lose out on that fight but it is going to be a 2 for 3 with IG able to take down this inhibitor. Yeah, so Royal Club win the fight, but still lose the inhibitor. So the base is wide open. You have to say overall successful mission for IG. That was just, I don't know, a little bit of an early Zonya's Hourglass coming through. Then Rookie went in without it and got condemned against the wall and destroyed. That was a lot of the consistent damage with the zoning that was coming through from Scion. Let's take another look at it. So Insect comes in, Korn gets a very good pull. And Rookie, right here, gets a good ultimate, but the immediate Zonyas at the same time of Kitties, maybe not trusting his support. Afterwards, he goes over the top and right here gets condemned and blown up. Name with some great mechanics. On the back line, you can see Zero just zoning with the cannon, making sure that he's being as annoying as possible, I think is fair to say. Eventually, Korn does fall down, but they're not able to grab anything else but the inhibitor. Yep, and they at least do get that inhibitor, but Royal Club, they are going to get caught here as well. Zonya's Hourglass immediately going to be popped here by Zero, who is most definitely dead. Kakao picks up that one. A house going to be thrown in celebration there by Zatai, and they're going to be able to take down yet another blue buff. Yeah, they've had a complete monopoly over the blue buff since early game, and IG, they're going to be able to control this bottom side of the jungle even further. Now pushing up the lane with Kid. 
Blank goes for the steal, doesn't get it. Now he's going back into the team. Yeah, there's the explosive cast to come through the Cataclysm as well. Emperor's Divide just throws everyone everywhere. I have no idea where these champions are going as Blank so incredibly low. Rookie hanging out against the wall, manages to block the condemn damage, but look at these Sand Soldiers managing to tear apart the members of Royal Club. Blank so incredibly low. Zero just respawning. This inner turret, it's going to fall down 7-2 to two now and a 10,000 gold lead. Yeah, and no summoner spells available for that skirmish, so neither team really happy to fight. On the side of Royal Club, you can see the Flash is just coming back off cooldown. 30 seconds later, they might be willing to tank it because it was their tanky Jarvan who got ulted back in the team, but not able to get anything done. A little bit unfortunate there for Royal Club. Of course, they do scale beautifully into this game, but the only problem with that is the fact that IG have an Azir and a Callista who also do incredible things in the late game. Not to mention Gragas, who's just so much more frustrating to deal with than Jarvan. Jarvan's flag and drag combo, very good initial CC, but Gragas in persistent team fights, especially with this 40% CDR build that Kakao's going, has a four second what? E and a four second W. So he's got all the percentage health damage coming through. All the knock-up and slows coming from his A and his Q. It's just a very annoying jungler. He certainly is, especially when there's three people trying to take down the Rift Scuttler and he just walks in and smites it away. Which is just incredibly rude. As Pink Horde here now being protected by IG. They want to pick up their own one. There's the Cataclysm coming through. Doesn't lock down anyone here as a teleport to come down from the tie. Cola looking to make something happen. Zero with a nice on you there as well. Everyone going gold in this fight as there's the slicing Maelstrom. Kitties gets destroyed. Name though gonna fall down on the backside. Trying to zone out some members. Rookie, Hemo plagues on him, but he's not dead just yet. Korn gonna use his Zonyas now as Kakao able to get some work done. Rookie from over the side here as well, but Korn in that pool able to do some work until Kakao takes him out and Blank now in complete an utter disarray. That was, I believe, a little bit of a save move coming through there as the wallop. Not going to find him as well. But Rookie, from the backside, going to be able to pick that kill up. And that's a one for four so far with Zero just respawning. Yeah, it certainly was. And we saw Rookie on the backside of that fight had the Vlad ultimate on him as well as two tanks chasing him. But the persistent damage coming through, all of the cooldowns, the mobility of Azir just meant that he was untouchable, honestly. And... Looks like he might be looking for a sneaky 1v1 onto Zero. No respects the cannon. And after what was a great early game from the Royal Club bottom lane, Name, he's looked good in team fights, but really hasn't been able to get as much done. Kid on the other side of the rift, he's now 5, 1, and 6 out of nowhere. Yeah, no problem there at all. He does have the QSS available. He also has a Bilgewater Cutlass build up on top of the fact that he already had three damage items. This Callista definitely doing some work. Still 40 CS behind, but he doesn't mind. He's picking up all this global gold from the turrets, all these kills in these team fights. And it seems like Royal Club, what they're doing is just practicing different strategies. It's like, okay, let's peel for Name, see how that one goes. Okay, we got aced, and that was really, really bad. Now let's just dive into their backline and try and kill Rookie, and then Name just gets destroyed, and they have no damage. Yeah, and if we've seen anything throughout the entirety of this season, the dive Rookie strat does not work. You really have to deal with Zatai and Kakao because they are very good at being able to get in there and disrupt the back line. And we'll see exactly where IG want to move after this. Kakao apparently wants to just throw a house into the creeps. Yeah, Zatai didn't really quite manage to do that correctly, did he? He's, he is wearing that um, Banshee's Veil like a blouse though in Mega Nar form, which is quite adorable. This inhibitor is going to be taken so down for the, the second time. the flank is there out of Vladimir. No, deciding not to go for it. Oh, actually, there's the Cataclysm to come through. Rookie immediately goes gold to zero. Not quite getting anyone in his ultimate. Hemo Plague, though, and many members as Rookie in a lot of trouble in that backside. is going to fall down there as Kid trying to kite around. Decimating Smash, not going to find him. Blank going down very low. Cola not taking any damage here at all. And Name still alive there on the backside. But Kid going to take down Cola. And my god, the damage as IG just tearing apart the members of, of, of Salon Royal Club, and that was just ridiculous. Yeah, such a good team fight coming through will probably be the game, and that was just miscommunication. Korn had left positioning in that brush to join the base again when the go button was hit, and Royal Club, they look like they're shaken up. They lose the game in 36 minutes, and it looked like they were in the driver's seat. Well, they certainly were in that top lane. Name having a brilliant early game, but Rookie 
The turret dead at 10 minutes, stayed 50 CS up. This guy is an absolute beast in that mid lane, and Korn is no slouch. Rookie's just really, really good. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the case, and Rookie coming through. I still think he has the best laning phase out of any mid laner in the league. His team fights, he was on point this game, got caught out of position a couple of times, does yep. tend to go over aggressive, but definitely trying to drag IG through this one. Now, clearly in that fifth position, yeah. if they're able to win this one, they will join Vici for equal fourth. Mm, we shall see exactly what happens here, of course, because IG will see whether they actually want to move ahead, whether this is going to be a game to try out new things coming through with the next one. But Starhorn Royal Club, they definitely need a victory, ladies and gentlemen. So stay tuned. We're going to have game two between Starhorn Royal Club and Invictus Gaming coming up very soon.